Today, I'll show you how I built this wooden generator noise reduction box to help keep this generator more quiet. And before this video is over, we'll do some sound testing to show you just how well this thing works. I'll be making this generator quiet box out of OSB plywood and these flame retardant sound absorbing acoustic sound panels. To start this build, I need to break down this OSB plywood. Let me show you what my game plan is. Here's the game plan for this generator sound shed. You can see this thing has four main components. It has an end, a top, and two sides. One end is gonna be open to let all the noise go out. So to digest my OSB plywood, I'm gonna be cutting this thing into three main sections. One end is gonna do the top, the middle is gonna do the end, and then the biggest section is gonna do both sides. Here's the rough measurements that I'm gonna be using to cut up my OSB plywood. Let me get you caught up to speed where I'm at. I have two sides. I'm calling it side one and side two. Let's take a look at them. Both sides are pretty much the same. Side one over here is 24 inches wide and we're gonna cut it 32 inches long. This bottom one, we're gonna cut 32 inches long, but I need it to be a half inch more narrow than side one. So we're gonna be ripping it 23 and a half. Side one and side two, I also want to be cut at five degrees. That way, when it's setting there, it's level. You might have noticed I'm wearing a new pair of boots. Brunt Workwear sent me a pair of boots to try, and so far, these things are pretty comfortable. If you're looking for a new pair of boots, give Brunt Boots a shot, and you can try them out with me. Use code MRFREDS10 to get $10 off at checkout. I'll put an affiliate link in the description below, and if you use it, it'll help out the channel. Looks like it's starting to rain on me here. I've got just enough time to cut the top and the end for length before it starts raining too hard. I've got all four pieces cut. I'm all out of time today, but it won't matter to you because the next time you see me, it'll be a new day. It's a new day and the sun is shining. I've cut the bottom of both sides of this sound shed from zero to three inches. That's gonna give a pitch on the roof so it will drain off rainwater. I'm gonna start putting this generator sound shed together. I'm gonna be adding hinges so it can fold up and then I'm gonna be adding these polyester flame retardant sound panels. I need to cut two strips of wood to mount my hinges to. One of them is an inch and a half by three quarter and the other one is an inch and a half by inch and a quarter. I'm gonna mount these strips on the bottom side of the lid. I'm gonna glue them and nail them. I drilled pilot holes for these screws so that I don't split out the strips. Remember I had side one and side two. Side one was a little longer and side two was a little shorter. The longer side I'm gonna mount with the three quarter inch strip and then the shorter side will mount to the thicker strip. Uh, 
Now it's time to attach the end. You'll notice when I mounted the strips, I left them back from this edge a half inch. That's going to allow the end board to slide right in there and span between the two sides. I'm using aluminum angle to connect my end piece. This aluminum angle is one and a half inches wide. I'm just cutting two pieces 24 inches long. Here I'm drilling some 1164 holes down the length of this angle. I'm drilling these holes every three inches. And then on the side, I'm gonna be drilling a 3 8 inch hole, and that's gonna be for our detent pin. To attach the aluminum angle, I'm using sheet metal screws. Now that the sound box is completely assembled, I'm going to install the polyester flame retardant sound panels and then we'll take it out and do some sound testing and see just how well it works. It's another new day on the sound box project. I've got all of my acoustic sound panel pieces cut. Before I glue them into place, I'm going to be installing the seven inch USB fan. Let me get that installed and then we can do the sound panels. This is a great little three speed USB fan. I used this same model on a previous build for a DIY ice cooler air conditioner. I'll put an affiliate link for this fan and for the acoustic panels in the description down below. Because I am going to paint this thing camouflage, I'm going to sand this entire thing before I go any further. I've masked everything off back there because I don't want to get overspray of this stuff anywhere that I want to paint. The method that I'm using with the 3M90 spray adhesive is to spray both surfaces and let them dry until they're just tacky. Then I'm just pressing both sides together. I've got all the acoustic panels installed. I've left it an inch away from the bottom so that it won't wick moisture out of the ground. Now I'm going to install the fan. I'm just going to push it in there. Nothing fancy here. I'm just going to use some zip ties. For a little seven inch fan, this thing's pretty powerful. And I'll use 5 8 brad nails to seal the deal. This is not very scientific, but this thing does a pretty good job of muffling my voice. Let's take this thing out in the field and do some real sound testing. Did I mention how portable this thing is? And this thing only weighs 38 pounds. To start our sound testing, I'm gonna let this thing warm up and we're gonna test it with and without the sound box. Today on cameras, we've got Jeff. Thanks for helping out today, Jeff. To put a load on the generator, I'm gonna be using this heat gun. Let's get a baseline standing right next to the generator. It looks like we're right at 59 decibels. 47. 48. Let's call it 48. Standing out here at 25 feet, we've got about 48 decibels. That is without the sound box. Now let's try it with the sound box. This generator does not have a CO2 sensor, so I bought this CO2 alarm. Let's put this thing in there and see if it goes off.
39, 40, that's a big change from 48. So that's about a decrease of eight decibels standing out here at 25 feet. And what about that CO2 alarm? That CO2 alarm has been in there the whole time. Let's press the button and make sure this thing's working. Yep, looks like this thing's working. So what do you guys think about this sound box design? Is this thing even worth building? Leave a comment down below. I'll break down the entire cost for this build in the video description. And what about heat build up in there? I made a heat testing video for these boxes. I'll put a link to it right there. I'm getting ready to paint this thing camouflage using these stencils. When I'm finished with that video, I'll link to it right there. I'm glad you watched and I hope you'll watch again.